This is the story of a very special woman who embraced her uniqueness and smarts, even when she never quite fit in. She followed her heart, her passions, and devoted her life to the one person she adored, her brother. I was born Estelle Toby Goldstein in the small town of Chelsea, Massachusetts. I was raised with a lot of orthodox beliefs and practices. I always had a feeling that I needed to follow my heart and I never felt like I fit in. I attended an orthodox school and by the time I was age three, I was reading the New York Times. I was actually kicked out of fourth grade class for teaching my own class. My IQ was off the charts. There was one person Estelle adored the most, her younger brother, Harry. We were inseparable. I adored him. And that was a love that stays with me to this day. My love for my brother, Harry, defined who I was to become and how I was going to live my life. I didn't realize this at the time. It became apparent at a young age that Harry was different. He was constantly getting into trouble, screaming, throwing tantrums. I knew at four years old, I wanted to fix him. Harry's developmental stages and intellect were not like Estelle's. He was diagnosed as bipolar, obsessive compulsive, and schizophrenic. Eventually, I diagnosed Harry with Asperger's. He was kinesthetic. He responded to hugging. He called me the sister or Sister Z. Estelle didn't have the stereotypical desires most girls her age. When people asked her what she wanted to do, her response was to be very educated and know everything. Getting married and starting a family, that was never on my to-do list. I always wondered why God had made me female. I had no interests at all in any of the things that girls my age were supposed to like. I never liked cooking, never wanted to get anywhere near a stove. Estelle was never interested in the usual pastimes of childhood. People would say she was like an adult in a child's body. All she wanted to do was to find a cure for her brother, Harry. Eventually, I was placed into a school for gifted children at age nine. My functional IQ was 180. My brother, had all kinds of emotional outbursts and was very tough to control. He was placed in another private school next door to mine. Estelle was so advanced for her age, her parents arranged an interview at the prestigious Beaver Country Day School. After the interview with the head of the French department, she was accepted into honors level French. Sacre bleu, the minute I put a beret on, I feel French like I am the reincarnation of a real French citizen. Vive la vie, vive la France, c'est magnifique. I skipped two grades and graduated at age 16 from Beaver Country Day School. I was the youngest female ever at age 15 to win an award from the Westinghouse Secondary Science Institute for my cancer research. By age 18, I was working the emergency room in a local Boston hospital. By the time I was 20, I graduated from Boston University with a pre-medical undergraduate degree. But it was difficult to continue as I was advised to get a PhD. I refused because I was eager to start medical school. At this point, Harry had graduated private school and he ended up enrolling at UMass Boston. However, something happened in his first year of college. He had a grand mal seizure and was hospitalized. 
I was really upset. They started Harry on medication without a diagnosis, without knowing what was wrong with him, without what was causing his problems being known to them. It was a shame and not science or medicine as I knew them. I called Harry's Harvard educated doctor and asked him, what is wrong with my brother? What is the treatment for what my brother has? I cannot have imagined any more direct and appropriate questions. He hung up on me. I was upset. There were no answers, no solution. Estelle knew she needed to gain the knowledge that Harry's doctors did not have. When I was 20 years old, I flew to France to study at the Amiens Medical School. In the seven years I was there, I never missed a class and I passed every requirement. At the end of the first year, I was ranked 38th out of 650 students. I had done nothing all year but study. Estelle's parents tried to help Harry continue at UMass Boston, but college was too challenging and exhausting. Without discussing this decision with Estelle, they took him out of school. My parents made the decision to put him in rehab and train him so he could get a job. He soon took a job at Boston Financial Data Services as a mail clerk and kept this job for 20 years. After my graduation, I was officially Dr. Estelle. And I continued my training, first at a Jewish hospital in Ohio. Then I moved on to Fargo, North Dakota. And I did a fellowship in neurology in Minneapolis. When I was in Minneapolis, I felt lonely isolated and sad. Estelle knew there was only one answer. She started performing comedy in her spare time. Doctor by day, comic by night. When the hospital where I was working lost accreditation, I walked into an army recruiting office across the street. I was sworn in as a captain, but I had to agree to lose 80 pounds within the next few months. I basically starved and danced away the weight every single night. The army decided my dexterity was not good enough for brain surgery, but that I was to become a great psychiatrist. The army's weight requirements were too much for me. I was under an enormous amount of stress. I became temporarily blind. The army was just too much. I was given an honorable discharge and like Dorothy, I ended up in Kansas, but in a psychiatry residency. The only thing I knew was science. So I walked into a library and asked for a literature search on what made a perfect marriage. And I wrote a plan and I followed my own plan. There were not a lot of men in Kansas who could come anywhere near that plan. It was amazing how well personal ads work. I got over 500 responses to the ad I had posted. I dated about 20 people, but politely rejected every single one. When I met Wade, I knew he was the one. We met for ice cream sundaes and soon became inseparable. Wade was always there for me. Even when I was very sick with a life-threatening pancreatitis, my Wade stood by me. Throughout that ordeal, I had to take charge of my own health. If I was going to be a mentor to patients, I would have to be a model for how to become healthy. 
Estelle gradually transitioned her medical practice away from using mostly prescription drugs to using natural treatments whenever it was safe. I now know the best ways to handle most medical and psychiatric situations, and whenever possible, I go natural. This worked for me, and I knew it would work for my patients. My experience led me to write a book called How I Lost Over Half My Body Mass Without Drugs, Diet, Exercise, or Surgery. I knew I needed to share my life lessons. During this time, Harry continued to work at Boston Financial Services. He worked very hard and complained of aches and pains in his feet, a symptom of Asperger's. His coworkers wondered what was going on with him, but Estelle never knew just how bad things were. Estelle finally recovered, but the worst was yet to come. Her mother died, and Harry was living in a residential home. He had big dreams of being able to live on his own, have a girlfriend, and get married. But his life took a turn for the worst. A caregiver mistakenly gave him the wrong dose of medication, and he died in the hospital from complications. His last words to me were, take care of your patients the same way you take care of me. You've got to be the best doctor because I was the worst patient. Dr. Estelle helps others find their passions and fulfill their dreams, just the way Harry would have wanted. Dr. Estelle's entire practice is a memorial to Harry. Her journey began with a quest to heal her brother, and this became her driving force in life.